Michael, you're on News 96.5. Go ahead. Hi, yeah, I have a quick question. My sister-in-law's husband is in the hospital um, due to a tragedy, but he does not have her on any of the legal information like cars or anything like that. So she has a very hard time to with legal things in regards to um, stopping payment on cars, yeah. loans, and banking information. Yeah. And Taking care of business. Know, yeah. You know, we, she, she has a very hard time doing anything because she's not, her name's on anything. All right. So I'm just trying to figure out what she can do or what, what's the process since she's not able to talk or anything. Well, ideally, he would be able to sign a financial durable power of attorney appointing his wife to take care of business in his stead. Is he competent? Can't do that because he's unconscious. He is not lucid um, okay. in regards to he just he, technically he just woke up yesterday and he's in and out very very often. All right. So I, I think what they're saying he's not competent enough to know what's happening is the issue. Well, Michael, there's. The next level up is a huge jump for us, Michael. It'd be a legal guardianship, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But considering how big the option is for the legal guardianship, I'm going to recommend that she hang on for a few days, and hopefully he comes around, and it would be lucid enough to sign a durable power attorney for financial affairs. If this was really an ongoing problem and she's not getting anywhere with the durable power of attorney, her next... Uh, remedy would be a legal guardianship, and unfortunately, Michael, it takes about five weeks and five thousand dollars to set up a legal guardianship. It's a big, okay. huge deal. Is there anything that would prohibit her from getting the durable um, one that you're speaking about if he's been Baker acted? No, that would not help her in this situation. Okay. So, Michael, mm. uh, hopefully he'll come around in a few days and she'll kept an, uh, catch him an opportunity where he could find this dur- sign this durable power of attorney for financial affairs. But that, let that be a lesson to all people out there. And, Chrissy, you and I, we talk about it in our uh, avoiding probate workshops. One of the documents we think that everybody should have should be a durable power of attorney for financial affairs, even between married couples. Exactly. And we talk about that. And in our workshops, as well as we talk to people over the phone and in person. And that's one of the things where we want to educate people to let them know, no matter what your age and no matter what your status as far as married or single, you should have that. Yeah, because most married couples own everything jointly, but even married couples have assets in their individual names, whether it's 401ks, IRAs, Social Security, automobiles, so they need to have these financial power of attorneys between themselves as a first choice with their kids as a backup choice. Michael, we wish you, uh, your brother-in-law, a lot of luck in the situation, and let us know if we can help.